The following theorem demonstrates to us that we can represent a vector in the vector space in terms of the vectors of our basis. And we describe this with the unique representation theorem. So we want to begin by letting our basis B be defined by the vectors B sub 1 through B sub n. And this is a basis for some vector space V. Then, for all vectors x in our vector space V, there exists a unique set of scalars C sub 1 through C sub n, such that vector x can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis. So we can say that this is such that vector x can be written as a linear combination. So we have C sub 1 times vector B sub 1 plus C sub 2 times vector B sub 2 plus la 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 all the way up to C sub n times vector B sub n. So we need to now go ahead and prove this. So here we go, the proof for the unique representation theorem. So again, we want to begin by letting B be the set of vectors B sub 1 through B sub n be a basis for some vector space V. So then by definition, we already know that B is going to span the vector space. So you can say that the span of the set of vectors B sub 1 all the way to B sub n. And since we know that the span of a set of vectors is the collection of all possible linear combinations of those vectors, we can say that for some vector x in V, that we can write this vector x here as a linear combination C sub 1 times vector B sub 1 plus all the way to C sub n times vector B sub n. And this is where this vector x is in that vector space V. Now we want to keep in mind here that the goal here is to show that these scalars C sub 1 through C sub n are unique. So let's now go ahead and suppose that vector x has an, an alternative representation using a different set of scalars. So let's suppose that we can write for some vector x in the vector space V that we can rewrite this as a linear combination D sub 1 times vector B sub 1 plus all the way to plus D sub n times vector B sub n. And this is such that D sub 1 through D sub n are the weights or our scalars. So again, keeping in mind that the goal here is to show the scalars are unique, we now want to consider the zero vector in our vector space. So we know that we can rewrite the zero vector as the difference of two vectors x in v. So, hey, we've got two different representations for vector x. So let's use these and plug them in to this equation. So we can rewrite this as we have c sub 1 times vector b sub 1 plus all the way to plus c sub n times vector b sub n. And now we are subtracting that alternative notation, d sub 1 times vector b sub 1 plus all the way up to plus d sub n times vector b sub n. And by the distributive property, we can take this negative here and distribute it through to all the terms in our alternative notation. So this becomes c sub 1 times vector b sub 1 plus la 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 all the way to c sub n times vector b sub n. So those remain the same. And then the alternative notation, we have now minus d sub 1 times vector b sub 1 minus all the way up to minus d sub n times vector b sub n. And looking at this, now we can see we have like terms. We've got the terms here that contain vector b sub 1. So factoring that common factor out, we've got scalar c sub 1 minus d sub 1, all multiplied by vector b sub 1. And we can continue grouping up these terms until we get to the last set of like terms here with the greatest common factor of b sub n, vector b sub n. So the new scalar here is c sub n minus d sub n multiplied by vector b sub n. So we'll keep this conclusion here in mind as we proceed with the rest of the proof. So, again, keeping that definition of basis in mind, since the set of vectors b sub 1 through b sub n are in the basis, 
we know that by definition that the set of vectors b sub 1 all the way to b sub n are linearly independent. That is the second condition from our definition of basis. So then by definition of linear independence, we know that the vector equation that we just found c sub 1 minus d sub 1 times vector b sub 1 all the way to c sub n minus d sub n times vector b sub n equaling the zero vector, that homogeneous equation has only the trivial solution. So in other words, this means that scalar c sub 1 minus d sub 1 must be equal to scalar c sub 2 minus d sub 2 plus all the way and setting this equal to c sub n minus d sub n must all be equal to zero. So let's go ahead here and consider the ith scalar of this equivalence. So somewhere in here is the ith scalar. So by the definition of linear independence, we know that the ith scalar c sub i minus d sub i is equal to zero. So by adding d sub i to both sides, we see that c sub i is equal to d sub i. And since this is the ith scalar, it's arbitrary. So this is going to hold true for all scalars. So since that ith scalar is arbitrary, this holds true for all scalars. Woo! -hoo! So therefore, since both representations of vector x are equivalent, therefore the scalars c sub 1 through c sub n are unique. So therefore, both representations here of vector x are equivalent, as we've demonstrated above, which implies that the scalars c sub 1 through c sub n are in fact unique. And we have finished our proof.